Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today for our series, A KPI Guide for Google Play Apps and Games. My name is Alyssa Perez, and I'm on the Developer Business Growth Team in Google Play. What my team does is leverage Google Play data to help partners like you identify opportunities, improve performance, and grow your business. Prior to joining Google, I worked on many mobile game products throughout my career. I held various titles from Business Analytics Manager to Economy and Monetization Strategist and Senior Product Manager. But for today's webinar, we're going to do an introduction to some of the most common metrics that mobile developers are tracking. So if you're new to mobile analytics or are looking for a refresher on key performance indicators you should track, this will be a great way to be brought up to speed on the metrics, how they're related, and how they're calculated. And for those of you that are familiar with some of these already, we'll be going into some examples of how to draw business insights from them and some guiding questions to point you in the right direction to understand your business's performance. Now, the reason we're sharing this framework with you is because we believe that having a strong grasp of these KPIs and how they're related will help drive your product mode roadmap and grow your business. And before we start, we also want to say thank you to everyone who submitted a question when registering. You'll see a Q&A section on the page, so please feel free to share your feedback, comments, and questions at any time. This is the metrics tree that we use at Google Play. It's based around daily revenue, because we all know we want to drive a strong bottom line. We're going to go through this framework together, looking at how the metrics are related, how we calculate these, and some examples of using them. Now, I do want to note that not every developer will look at their title's performance on a daily level. So if you are, for example, more of a weekly or monthly destination, you might set up your tree differently to be more meaningful for the cohort of users that are most important to you. But we'd still love to hear your thoughts and feedback in the chat. So feel free to share how you look at these KPIs for your business, especially if you see some that aren't present here or maybe slightly different. But let's jump right in. Let's start with daily revenue. Obviously, we're all tracking this because we want to understand how much money our app is bringing in. But the way that you can calculate this or the two levers that are driving it is you can multiply DAO or our daily active users by the ARP DAO or average revenue per daily active user. So I have two levers there that I can pull to drive daily revenue. I can either increase my user base or I can increase how much revenue I'm getting out of each user in my title. But we're going to start with the daily active users branch of the tree. And then we're going to work our way down and go through each of these metrics and talk about how they're related. So daily active users, we can grow our user base by doing two things. We can get new users to come in, or we can have more users return to our title. So in this case, daily active users equates to the sum of the new installs we see coming into our title and the returning users. So going one step down, let's talk about new installs. Try and answer the question of how successful are we getting new users into our title? Now, in this case, you have two levers that you can pull. You may have organic installs or what we call deep link installs. Now, I want to call out the difference in nomenclature here. Deep link is not a common term that I ever heard when I was on the developer side. But at Google Play, it's the only insight we have into things that are happening outside of the store. So if you are a mobile developer, you probably have a deeper insight into where your new installs are coming from. Meaning if you're doing paid acquisition, you can probably track which channel they're coming from. However, at Google, because we don't have that insight, we simply group anything that's coming from outside of the Play Store into the deep link bucket. So let's talk about how you would um, kind of use these child metrics like organic and deep link installs to understand, you know, what are the insights into my business? So starting with organic, if you happen to get feature on the store, that's great. It's a great way to get organic traffic. But you can also think through what type of virality your title has. So that goes to what type of social virality is there? Is there a big hype um, that's happening? Or do you have a social feature that's allowing people to invite others uh, or kind of bring them in? So again, you can use your own title and the features within that to drive organic traffic. Now for Deep Link, it's really important to think about your acquisition strategy. Now, in terms of deep link conversion, you want to think about testing on the Google Play Store listing. Is there a test you can do on the icon, the wording, even the screenshots that you have available can be really powerful to drive conversion for users who are on the store or that you're driving to the store. On top of that, you want to make sure that any ads you do or anything like that provide the clear value that your app would provide to the user in order to optimize the deep link installs you have coming in. 
So in this case, new installs is the sum of organic installs and deep lake installs. But now let's talk about the other side, returning users. How successful are we at getting new users to come back? So it's great to have a, a large top of the funnel pushing a lot of people into the app. But if you're not retaining them, you may be wasting marketing dollars. So it's really important to understand the um, retention of the new users that you're bringing in. So the way that we calculate returning users is by multiplying the um, percentage of users that returned on a certain day um, by the cohort size from the previous day active. So for example, if you're looking at D2 retention, you would look at what percentage of the users returned on their second day multiplied by the size of the install cohort on the very first day. So in this case, you're going to actually multiply and then sum, and that's because you're going to have users across varying ages in the game. You may have users who are brand new, but you also may have users who have been in your title for months, two months, three months, even sometimes a year, depending on how mature your title is. So again, you're going to multiply those by each install cohort and then sum across them to get the returning users. Now here, I like to think about returning users um, in another way as well. It also includes reactivated users. So not only do you want to understand early retention, so for new users that are coming in, really think through what that onboarding looks like. Um, do you have any long loading times, large secondary downloads? Is your lobby really clear or is it confusing that can cause you know, people to bounce right out after they come in? But also you can understand which channel is driving. So now we're linking the two sides of this tree. So DAU, you may see stronger retention from organic users or organic installs, and that's because they're naturally interested in your title. So it is important to understand the relationship across these and break out retention or those returning users by the channel that they came in on as well. Now, as you look forward for retention, so we talked a little bit about early retention. I also want to talk about later retention. Um, if your users are staying around for the first month, but after the first month, you're seeing very, very low retention, it drops off greatly. Some things to consider are the types of content that you have available. How much is available to the actual user in order to consume? Um, am I continuing to see increased engagement from the users that are sticking around? A good leading indicator here may be that if you see engagement dropping off for your more uh, veteran users, that may be a good sign that they may be more likely to churn because they're no longer seeing value and engaging at a, at a lower rate. So really think through what type of return mechanics you have that are bringing them back, as well as making sure that you're providing enough content for your users. So now we're going to look at the other branch. And this is looking at the ARPDAO, or the average revenue per daily active user. Now I want to call out that some of these metrics are a bit more targeted towards the in-app purchase monetization model, especially because we are looking at daily granularity. But the idea or framework across the metrics in these um, smaller clusters is going to be the same for other monetization models. We will also have a separate webinar that goes into more detail on KPIs around subscriptions um, in the near future. But let's start with average revenue per daily active user. So this is helping you answer the question of how well am I monetizing my entire user base? And what this equates to is the multiplication of your daily buyer conversion multiplied by your RPUPU, or your average revenue per paying user. So I like to think of this metric as a primary monetization metric because it helps you understand how much revenue you're able to extract out of your entire user base. But more importantly, we can think of daily conversion as the main primary metric that we want to drive, trying to understand what percentage of my active users are seeing enough value in my title to spend on a given day. Now, in this case, you have two levers to pull to drive daily buyer conversion. You can either pull new buyer conversion, which means you're trying to get more first-time buyers into your title, or repeat buyer conversion, which in that case would be someone has paid before and they're willing to pay again. So daily buyer conversion equates to the sum of new buyer conversion and repeat buyer conversion. So when you're thinking about kind of a buyer percentage, some things to consider are, do you have some type of starter pack or promotion for new users in order to get them onto that purchase cycle? Can you get them to purchase once in order to figure out how to get them to purchase again? We normally see in mobile, especially for in-app purchase monetization models, that once you can convert someone, it's much easier to continue to convert them because they've seen value and they've already invested, which means they're more likely to retain and continue to spend. Now for repeat buyer conversion, again, that goes to being able to target what the user was buying, at what price point, what they were interested in, what was the trigger. 
So really thinking through what, am, what is that buyer interested in and how can I create a special offer for them to purchase again? But you can also use this as a leading indicator for lapsed buyers. And what I mean by lapsed buyers is somebody who has paid once, but maybe hasn't paid in an extended period of time. You can use this understanding again to target them maybe with a lower price point that would again get them back onto the payer purchase cycle you would expect to see. Now let's shift gears into ARPU or average revenue per paying user. I know we talked about daily conversion being a primary metric. This is a metric that we like to call the secondary monetization metric. And that's because it's looking at how much money you're able to get out of your buyer base. And as we all know on mobile, we probably see a very small percentage of our active users actually paying in our title. So therefore optimizing this metric or focusing on this by itself may not be long-term sustainable for your business. So average revenue per paying user equates to the total revenue in a day divided by the unique buyers in a given day. And you can get to it from the two child metrics by multiplying them together. So you would multiply average transaction value by the number of transactions, the average number of transactions your buyers are making in a day. Now in this case, I do want to point out that if you have a subscription model, you're probably not going to be tracking transactions per buyer. And that's because you're on a monthly SKU, a weekly SKU, where only one transaction is happening. But if you are an IEP and you have multiple currencies available in your title, it is important to track this metric because usually the more currencies you have for sale for real money can impact this metric's average transaction value. So that goes to trying to find your optimal pricing for your title. And you wanna balance not only the optimal pricing in order to get the maximum value per transaction, but also maximizing conversion. So now let's talk about these two metrics in relation. Now, daily buyer conversion is obviously related to average revenue per paying user. One thing we commonly see is that as daily buyer conversion is growing for a title, you may expect that average revenue per paying user is stabilized or dropping off. And depending on how many price points you're offering in your title, that could be because you're getting a larger number of users to pay a smaller amount, as opposed to being heavily reliant on a small number of users paying a large amount. So if we go through an example of is it better to drive my average revenue per daily active user up by increasing conversion or average revenue per paying user? Now it's a lifelong question. I think it's one that uh, takes a lot of balancing, but in our opinion at Google Play, it's really important to focus on that primary metric. It's much healthier to have $101 buyers than it is to have one $100 payer. And that's because your risk goes down. If I lose one $1 payer in that 100 buyer pool, I only lose 1% of my revenue versus if I lose that one large buyer, it's gonna have a larger impact on my bottom line. So it really is about finding the optimal balance between how many users can you convert and show them value for paying in your title, but also optimizing what is the right price point for each user. Now that we've gone through the tree, let's take a look at the full visual again. So here you can see it in its entirety. And I really want to explain now that we've gone through each of the clusters, how to read it in its entirety. So every metric is going to have a parent. And if two metrics have the same parent, you're going to multiply them together in order to get the parent value. The only time that this isn't true, and we went through these examples, is when there's a dotted line around the metric. So for example, daily active users equates to the sum of new installs and returning users. So that dotted line is an indicator of summing the children in order to get to the parent value as opposed to multiply them. So let's jump into Q&A. Um, so we have a question coming in. Should I care more about how much pain users are spending or how many people are paying at all? Is one more important than the other? It's a really great, great question. Um, I did kind of touch on it a little bit, but it is finding the optimal balance for your title in terms of how many users are converting and how much you're getting out of those users. Now, in our opinion, it goes back to that primary and secondary metric. It's always safer to invest in trying to figure out how to get more breadth and more of your user base spending as opposed to relying on a small subset of users that are paying a lot of money. Um, so it's up to you, but we like to say, you know, focus on the primary metrics. And once you've optimized how many users can spend in your title, you can then figure out how to optimize the secondary metrics or average revenue per paying user. Um, we also have another question. Does time of day matter? And for which ones? So um, if you're tracking any of these metrics in real time, I'll use DAO or daily active users as the biggest example here. It is important to take into account which markets you're heavily prevalent in. 
Um, so for example, if you are a developer based out of the US, but you are targeting APAC markets, it is important to understand the time difference between there. You may see very, very low daily active user counts during our middle of the day, but that's because it is the middle of the night in APAC. So it is important to take into account which markets you're targeting um, or are making up majority of your user base. Um, do you recommend calculating monthly users as 30 days or 28 days? This is a really, really great question. Um, it's one that I've worked at companies that we've done both. So I think as long as you're consistent across all of your metrics, it's up to you. Um, I have done some where it is calendar month. In that case, it is a little bit more difficult to see daily performance because you're waiting for the end of the month to occur before you actually see your true MAU for, for example, October. Um, but if you do a rolling 28 days, it may be easier to kind of see quick changes in any of the metrics. So it's up to you guys, but as long as you're consistent across what that definition is, you'll be fine. Uh, the next question, how does the right side of the tree look different for subscriptions? Another great question. Um, I did highlight we are going to have a webinar fully on subscriptions, monetization, key performance indicators. But just to give you an idea, there is still that optimal balance of how many users are converting to a, sub a subscriber, what that price point is, and that price point can be tested on the Google Play Store. Um, but in that case, for subscriptions, you also have to take into account subscription renewal. So you can think of that as um, return buyer rate. So how many users are returning to buy? You really have to focus on how can I retain as many of those subscribers each period when their SKU is expiring. Feel free to stick around. We'll be available to answer any questions, comments, or feedback via chat for the next 30 minutes. But thank you for joining the Intro to Metrics webinar. We will have additional webinars that's doing a deep dive on acquisition and engagement KPIs. And you can also check out our Medium posts and our previous webinars on bridging the gap, games approaches to engagement and monetization. Thank you.